Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is the hall of fame. Faith, these are your biggest players in Christ. And we have to see what happened to them when they were faithful to God. Hebrews chapter 11. All right. So if you go to Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through like 30, it talks about all of these great exploits that these men of God and women of God were able to do. They were able to separate the Red Sea. They were able to shut the mouths of lions. They were able to resurrect the dead. The blind were seen. The lepers were cleansed. They were able to make the walls of Jericho to fall down, right? But there's a sober part that we have to read, and it's the last 10 verses, like 30 to 40, right? So we'll start with verse 33, Hebrews chapter 11. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of the weakness were made strong, waxed valiantly in fight, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being desolate, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, in the depths of dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Received not the promise. God having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. So right there, it says that God has provided better promises for us than things that are in this life. So if you look at the temptation of Jesus, it's the same temptation that we see in First Peter or Second Peter. I think it's first, I think it's second Peter chapter one. It says that the devil is tempting us with the pride of life, the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. That is everything that's in the world and the kingdom of the devil that is around us. And so the three temptations of Jesus are the three that we see in Peter's letters, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And so if we believe that our gospel is the American dream, it will always be physical and we will always be led astray because we will not be partakers in Christ's suffering and then we will not be partakers of Christ's resurrection and glory. No, and again, this is Hebrews chapter 11 that we are not in this world, but we are pilgrims here and we are passing through. So all your best things will be in this life. And I heard this quote, it's not my quote, it's an amazing quote. It says that earth in this life is the closest thing to hell that the believer, the Christian will experience. But earth in this life is the closest thing to heaven that the sinner will receive. So what that means is that you as a believer, you will have suffering and pain in this life but if you endure to the end, the glory to come, seeing Christ, beholding him, immortality, bodily, right? The shining of God's light, the Father and the Holy Spirit, the kingdom to come, can't even compare to the age that we're living in. But if you are a sinner, a person who is not Christian, and you do not believe in Jesus, the goodness that you experience in this life is the only goodness that you will experience because you will receive the torment, the darkness of hell and eternal hell fire burning in which there will be suffering forever. And so this is why evil people sometimes are rich and prosperous and seem to be winning in this life. And sometimes Christians or believers are poor 
it's suffering because we know that this system that we're living in is going to pass away when Christ comes. 